Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Happy Tuesday morning. We are so pleased we can be with, here with us today for the day two of the Laker Leadership Conference. Um, and the keynote event for this conference, how to become LinkedIn famous. I know I want to become famous on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> and this will prepare you for ongoing professional and personal success. Today's format is live streamed and recorded for future use. So hello to our remote audience today. Okay, Q and A will be at the end and uh, there are no cards, no cards on the table if you wanna keep your thoughts together during the presentation and then we'll share those at the end. And remember to, um, if you take pictures today or post inspirational quotes, um, or your LinkedIn profile, which would be fitting, use um, Laker Leadership Conference, hashtag Laker Leadership Conference. Uh, and then it will populate into this fun ebook that we're working on. So also share your kudos to um, Lucretia this morning on her LinkedIn, saying thank you for your presentation and um, happy to have you here. Unfortunately, our moderator is unable to be with us. So you're, you're with me today. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> But it was going to be Michelle Rutherford from NBC uh, Chicago. So thank you for being great partners for that. Um, as we have set, we had another anchor from, from NBC yesterday. Um, but today's a presentation, and sorry, I'm um, Jessica Mueller. I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Engagement here at Roosevelt. And I'm happy to be here as um, coordinating this um, conference and um, managing the Young Professionals Association, which is the group that brought this conference to you today. Uh, so, but today's, before, without further ado, today's presentation is about how to elevate your professional online presence. Uh, fitting the topic, you can reach um, me at my LinkedIn, uh, Jessica Mueller, and um, connect with me there. But I wanna uh, turn it over to Lucretia Davis. She is a career coach, author, CEO of Next Up Resume, and she's here today about building your influence through personal branding, establishing and leveraging your professional network, and executing a content strategy that drives high engagement and explosive, explosive amounts of traffic to your profile. Lucretia is an expert LinkedIn biz strategist coach and speaker who helps ambitious people launch profitable brands on LinkedIn. I know she's connected with several people here who are here at the conference um, through her own endeavors and um, connections. So I know that they're excited to link up in person finally. Starting with zero audience, en audience engagement or views, Lucretia began leveraging LinkedIn to grow her career development and resume writing agency in 2017. Since then, Lucretia has organically grown her audience to over 40,000 followers, scaled her business to, multiple, uh, to a multiple six-figure company, generated over 10 million views, and landed 50-plus paid engagements and partnerships with brands like Capital One, AT&T, Coursera, and Facebook, all through LinkedIn. Who, her work has been featured on ABC7 News, Rolling Out, Forbes, LinkedIn News, Newsweek, and more. Brains Magazine, named Lucretia a top 11 expert to follow on LinkedIn in 2021. So thank you for Lucretia for being here today and we appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right guys, bear with me. Okay, it's always embarrassing to hear stuff about myself, <laughs> but thank you for that amazing introduction. Can we just clap it up just to, you know, spice up the energy in the room? Yes, yes. So I'm Lucretia Davis, and today we are going to talk about building your LinkedIn presence and your personal brand. I would like to see by a show of hands, who has a LinkedIn profile in this room? 
almost everybody. Okay. Who has a complete LinkedIn profile in this room? Okay, hands are starting to, you know, disappear. Uh, how many of you by a show of hands are actually active on LinkedIn? Okay, a little bit more. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hopefully all of that changes today because having a LinkedIn presence and a personal brand could pay huge dividends. All right. So I actually built two businesses on LinkedIn. And prior to that, I used LinkedIn for job searching. Everybody has used LinkedIn for job searching. Yeah. All right. So probably like you, I had to do a LinkedIn profile in school and it was just a box that I checked off. I didn't really know much about LinkedIn at the time and what it could do for my life and career. If you haven't noticed already, the face of LinkedIn is completely changing. It's no longer just this job search site. Yes, it still can be leveraged for that, but it also can be leveraged for other reasons, such as attracting opportunities without applying for opportunities, monetizing the platform, leveraging the expertise that you have gained from corporate, among other things. All right, so today's presentation is becoming LinkedIn famous. And when I say famous, I don't mean like famous. I mean famous as a brand, right? Famous as a brand, having people wanting to track you down and work with you. All right, so let's talk about some reasons why you should create a LinkedIn brand. Number one is it mutually benefits you and your uh, company and your job role. So let's say for instance, you work in a client facing role, maybe you work in business development or something like that. It can help you increase whatever, if you have a revenue generating role or something like that, it will help you there. Having a LinkedIn brand uh, could attract passive, hidden, um, better job opportunities without applying. So there are people that are literally attracting amazing jobs without even applying through their LinkedIn brand. So that's something to consider. I mean, who in here actually likes filling out job applications? Yeah, nobody? I figured that. All right, uh, the next thing is you can monetize your expertise apart from your nine to five, right? So I know that a lot of companies have policies in place where you, you know, it's competition, it's con considered competition and they're not wanting you to launch brands. But if there's a different way that you can leverage the expertise that you have in corporate and make some money off of it, right? Maybe you're in marketing, maybe you do websites, you know, things like that. You can monetize your LinkedIn profile apart from your nine to five. I mean, who likes multiple streams of income? Who doesn't like multiple streams of income, right? In order to keep up with inflation, that is the way that we have to go. All right, so um, you can build a business that allows you to exit corporate if you want, right? I'm still for having corporate money and other money, right? Everyone's saying to quit their jobs, but that's not my belief. But if that is something that you want, you can do that. Or you can supplement your income with four and five, six figure um, contracts, corporate contracts. All right. Your personal brand remains when jobs go, right? So no one likes to lose jobs, but the pandemic has showed us that it's not as safe as we thought, right? But those who have those personal brands on LinkedIn, they have what I call social currency, right? So what that means is they can get a leg up, right? In the job search. And that goes into my next point. Your brand is your currency and can work in your favor in your job search. I've already talked about how you can attract opportunities, right? But let's say you got a referral for Facebook or whatever company you want to work for, or just any company, right? When you apply, they are going to look at your LinkedIn profile 10 times out of 10, right? And so when they look at your LinkedIn profile, they're going to expect that you actually have a LinkedIn profile. We're all professionals, we all know at this point to have a LinkedIn profile. But the thing is, 
everybody just has a LinkedIn profile. Not everybody has a complete LinkedIn profile as we showed in this room. And uh, not everyone actually leverages LinkedIn for building a brand, right? Not everyone actually engages content on there, share content on there, right? So that shows initiative. It shows that you're a self-starter. It shows the passion that you have for your work. So that is another thing that having a personal brand on LinkedIn can do. It can increase your negotiating power and it can also give you a leg up as a candidate in the job search. And then finally, it's rather simple to do. So why not? Yeah? Okay. All right. So building a personal brand is not all that complex. So today I'm going to share with you my four part framework to becoming LinkedIn famous and attracting dream opportunities and clients. All right. This framework includes number one, unique brand positioning, right? So what makes you different, specialized and unique? That's something that we're going to talk about. Secondly, profile messaging and optimization. So setting up a LinkedIn profile that converts with regards to the unique brand positioning that was established. Thirdly, expanding awareness. So building brand awareness through LinkedIn content creation. And I'm gonna say and or engagement because some people, they're not really into the, the content creation thing. They're not into that sort of thing, right? But having activity on LinkedIn, AKA engaging content and joining conversations could also suffice. And by doing that, you might get motivated to start sharing your own content. And then finally, network and connection building, right? So who in this room is tired of hearing that it's not what you know, it's who you know and all of that, right? So we hear that, right? And it's becoming more and more true. Sorry, guys. So what that means is we got to get out there. We got to start building connections. We got to start networking. And the perfect place to do that is on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, the hiring managers are on there. The recruiters are on there. The key decision makers are on there. The clients are on there. Whatever you need. All right. Now, first, let's talk about brand positioning. And as far as me as a speaker, I'd like to make things a little bit conversational. I don't like to talk at you guys because it's weird. And I don't, you know, it's, I want to make this interactive for you guys. So I want one of you guys, if there's a brave soul in the room, if you could let me know, what do you think I mean by unique brand positioning and why is that important? Yes, ma'am. Yes, targeted. That is the word of the day, actually. I love that. Anybody else? All right. All right. Well, you are right on par with that. So I like to say, and I borrowed this quote from someone, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Someone deep said that, I don't remember the person's name, but it stuck with me and I love it because it is so true, right? So what that means is you need to position yourself as the go-to expert to solve a specific problem for a specific client or organization, right? So don't have an and or brand, right? Don't say, oh, I do marketing and I do art and I do all of these different things, right? You want to be known for one thing, right? And this is even what companies expect. They tell you to tailor your resume. We have the applicant tracking systems out there that are tracking down the keywords that you have on your resume and all this other stuff, right? Because they too want to feel like you are only interested in them right? You only want to serve them and not any and everybody under the sun, okay? So the other thing is um, the goal is to differentiate yourself as much as possible. And we're going to cover some strategies for that or some things that you should consider for that. But the goal is to differentiate yourself as much as possible. And a lot of people, they take this overboard. They think that they have to figure out this thing that makes them 
this unicorn and the only person on the World Wide Web that does something, right? That's not true. Um, you do need to differentiate yourself as, as much as possible, but try to stay authentic to what that means for you. So you'll need to consider things like the specific group that you serve, right? So if you're a professional, maybe you help uh, NGOs or Fortune 500 companies or women of color or something like that. For me, I am a LinkedIn trainer. And so though I work with everybody, my client base has largely been women of color. So that is my target audience. That is who I speak to on LinkedIn, right? So that's the specific group that I serve within the LinkedIn coaching and training industry. So that's one way to differentiate myself, right? The other way to differentiate yourself is the specific method or angle that you use to solve problems in your industry. So for example, job coach, and I used to be one. Um, well, still kind of am one, but that's besides the point. Um, but job coaching, right? So someone might specialize in helping people land jobs specifically in tech, right? Some people might specialize in helping people land jobs without applying online, right? That is their particular angle. It is not that they just help people find jobs or that they just teach people how to leverage LinkedIn. They have a specific method or angle. Sometimes it will be both for you. Sometimes it will be one or the other. For example, me, my specific angle is not just teaching people how to write content or just teaching people just LinkedIn as a platform, but I also teach people how to build the business and the brand from the ground up and then launch on LinkedIn. And that is a market that is not really that big. Thank God, I'm still <laughs> running that market right now. All right, and then the third thing is the specific reason or why for what you do, right? So does anybody in here know their why? Nobody, their why for what they do. Okay, all right. Would anybody mind sharing too much? Okay, there you go. Yes. Yes. Awesome. I love that. Can we give it up for her? That was that was excellent. All right. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else want to share their why? No? Okay. All right, well, I'll share mine. So my why as far as LinkedIn training and coaching and helping um, women of color is that when I first started on LinkedIn, there weren't many influencers that looked like me on LinkedIn. So that is why I wanted to come in and um, you know, change that. All right, so by establishing your unique brand positioning, you can create a more targeted LinkedIn profile, which is what we are going to go through today. So those folks in here who do not have a LinkedIn profile, I'm hoping that you are listening very carefully. And I don't mind if you even have your phone out or your laptop and making adjustments as we go. I am totally into that kind of thing, so feel free. I'll try to make this not too boring for you, but you know, it, it gotta get, it, it has to get done. All right, profile messaging and optimization, starting with your profile URL, right? Some of you guys are probably like, what the heck is she talking about? And some of you, some of you guys uh, may have seen the link to your LinkedIn profile as your name, your first and last name with a bunch of numbers and different stuff behind it. That is something that you want to change. You can make it just your name, your first and last name. You can make something more on brand. So like it could be 
LinkedIn, Lucretia, I would never do that to be honest, but if I wanted to, right, you can include a keyword that, you know, describes who you are as a brand. And the way that you do that is when you're on your profile, you have to edit your public URL and you can make that adjustment. You can change it from all those weird letters and things. Your banner photo, you guys can hear me okay, right? Okay, this is, by the way, this is my first time using one of these things. I feel like super official right now because I always have the big microphone and like I feel all important and stuff because I got this little thing. All right, so um, your banner photo, right? So that is like your billboard. It's that thing that's all the way at the top of your profile. Hopefully you guys don't have like a gray box, meaning that it's empty, you don't have one. But um, if you are willing to change that, if you're a brand, right? So if you're somebody who is wanting to monetize LinkedIn, you can have your website displayed on there. You can have your business tagline on there. You can have your business titles on there. If you are a professional, you can display your favorite quote. You can display your top core competencies. You can put your uh, position title in there, your industry, or you can just use a relevant industry image, right? So that is something that you can do. Then next, your cover story. A lot of you guys are like, I didn't know all this. This, we, it took all of this to do a LinkedIn profile, geez. But yeah, cover story is like a 30 second video. Yeah, so this is really cool. I love it because people are able to land on your profile and, you know, see you and, you know, um, you articulate your elevator pitch, right? But you only got 30 seconds though. So this will be just something like, hey, I'm so-and-so, this is what I do. This is the type of content I share, or maybe I'm looking for opportunities or something like that. I'm open to connections, whatever that call to action is. Has anybody seen a cover story on LinkedIn yet? The videos? No? Okay. All right, well, I just took mine down because I have to re-record it, so I don't have an example, but literally when you click on someone's profile, if they have a cover story, it's like the first thing that you, it'll replace the, the profile photo and you'll see that there's a video and you're able to click on it and watch it. So it's really cool. Your profile photo, all right. Duh, of course you need a profile photo. So I won't spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to let you guys know that it doesn't always have to be a super buttoned up thing if that's not your thing. You know, depending on your industry, maybe you're in arts or, you know, something else. Um, you're in the creative industry. Maybe there is a way that you can display your personality in your photo um, and your ideal audience may like that. It doesn't have to be, a super buttoned up thing, depending on you. If that's the sort of thing you're into, then, then great. But you can also use a camera phone. It doesn't always have to be um, a professional photographer or whatever, because we got iPhones and they say Android has the better camera, arguably, I don't know. I'm not even gonna get into that fight, um, but I'm team Apple, just so you know. Um, but yes, so you can take one with a ring light, keep it simple. Next is your headline statement, your headline statement. So LinkedIn automatically defaults this headline as your name um, and your company that you work at, right? But that doesn't really do you justice. You don't wanna listen to LinkedIn on that. You wanna listen to me on this, right? So your headline is actually the single most, the single most searchable content on your profile. So when people are using that search, right? So you'll see the search, you've seen that, right? When people type in keywords to locate people, that directly aligns with the headline on your profile. is It isn't searching keywords in your about section. It's not searching keywords in your skill section even. It's the headline that is the single most searchable content on your profile. 
So you need to make sure that people are able to quickly grasp your value and you also need to make sure that you are searchable, right? And so there are a couple of different templates that I've provided to you guys for you to do this. Um, I've kind of used me as an example a couple of times, which is kind of pretentious, but hey, just bear with me. Um, the first one is you can list a couple of different titles or you can just list one. And this is for someone maybe who has a brand or even professionals as well. So you would put whatever keywords you want to be found for, right? So whatever industry you're in, um, that kind of thing. So for me, it's LinkedIn expert, coach, speakers, and then I have my tagline, and then I have a call to action, right? And then the second one is, this could be someone who's a part-time preneur, right? This could be your job title by day and your business title by night. And then in most cases or many cases, I should say, what you do as a side business, you kind of gain some of those skills from your day job or it kind of relates in some fashion. So you can make the connection there that you're leveraging whatever experience that you have in corporate to help these other people on the side type of deal. And then the third one is for someone else who is, you know, a part-time preneur or something like that. You can have your job title at your company. You can have your founder at the company that you started, and then you'll have your tagline statement and your call to action. And yeah, so keywords, keywords are key. Here. Any questions about that? I know we have Q and A at the end, but no, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So it could be um, open to opportunities, right? It could be um, check out my resume that's featured in my featured section. You know, it could be various different things. All right. No problem. Your featured section. So on your LinkedIn profile, you're able to feature some things. You can feature photos, you can feature links, th those kind of things. So what I recommend for the featured section is that you display stuff that actually matters. I mean, for me, I'm not a big fan of featuring like posts and things like that, but you can. Some people like to do that. Maybe they went viral or something like that and they want to feature it there. That's not my style. I like to feature like maybe a sales page, maybe your resume, maybe you've been featured somewhere. Maybe you have some video testimonials or something like that. Maybe you have white paper or something like that that you've worked on or a blog you know, different things like that. Things that demonstrate your work style, things that is um, on brand, things that show what you're doing in your industry and for brands, the entry points into your, your sales funnel. So like scheduling a consultation or something like that. And then we have your profile summary. All right, this is the part that I'm gonna be just really honest with you guys. I get so annoyed when I see just a couple of sentences in the profile summary. And also when people speak about themselves in third person, I know it's, you know, it's okay. If you are into that, that is fine. It's okay, no judgment. I recommend that you don't do as an exact copy paste from your resume summary onto your LinkedIn profile at the minimum, change it to eyes and minds and make it more, you know, make it in first person, make it a little bit more of a conversational type of read. In my opinion, right now, depending on the industry, depending on the career level, right? Then third person isn't too bad, but Regardless of that, it should describe what you do, how you do it, and why you do it. And just some little tips and hacks. You want to make sure that you're breaking up the text. Try not to use 
super like large paragraphs that that when people see it, they already get overwhelmed and not really wanting to read it. So try to break up the text. You can use like over 2000 characters at this point. So you can be descriptive. You can be very descriptive. You can use bullet points. You can even use emojis if you want. Some people are into that. Some people aren't. But bottom line is make it easy and an interactive read. So some of the things you can do is you can just provide um, some context about what you do at your um, organization or as a company. You wanna make sure that you are including the right buzzwords. Um, you can uh, list your core competencies. But for me, what I really care about is stating accomplishments, right? So you wanna make sure that you're stating those accomplishments. So maybe you have an accomplishment section on your resume, maybe you've bulleted some accomplishments in your different job roles on your resume, but I wanna know like from your LinkedIn profile, the summary, right? The summarization of it all. So your profile summary needs to be complete. And then next we have your experience section. Another pet peeve of mine is a lot of people, they put their job roles on there, but they don't say anything about what they do, right? It's like completely empty. And I think at this point, most of us have a resume. So I'm just thinking like, why can't we just copy paste that part? Now that part is okay to copy paste. I wouldn't copy paste the profile summary, but you gotta do what you gotta do for the experience section because you don't want it to be blank, right? So a couple of different hacks here because I'm not sure what part of the audience is um, professionals or the ones that are building a brand or both. So a couple of different things. If you're a full-time entrepreneur and your background aligns with what you do, like say for instance, um, my career is in marketing and I'm helping people in marketing, that provides a level of credibility. So you can sh display your experience there. If you're a full-time entrepreneur and your career background does not relate to your business, you can choose not to display your past work history. For me, my background is in compliance. I had a really, really brief stint in recruiting, but the, the, big, the most part of my background is in compliance. It's not relevant to what I do today. I can choose to put it on there or not, but it's not gonna really do anything for my business. And then finally, whether or not your career background aligns with your business, or if you are a career professional, you have to list your work history. But just bear in mind that think of it as the resume as well. On your resume, you're including the positions that are relevant to what the goal is now, if it doesn't you know, create an employment gap and you'll take out some of those other things. So just keep that in mind for your experience section. You can keep it relevant right? You don't have to list every single job you've, are, you've ever had in the world. If you had a job for like three months or, you know, a month or something like that, and you really don't want to put that out there, you can. And by the way, that's nothing to be ashamed of, but I'm just saying you can put that out there. And then your skills section. Now, all right. So how many of you have applied to jobs on LinkedIn? Okay. All right. So how many of you have seen the competitive intelligence part where it shows that you have X amount of skills out of the 10 skills at the company? Right. Now that, that directly aligns with your skill section, right? So you may have looked at that, that competitive intelligence report and said, hey, I know Microsoft Word, who does it? How do they assume that I don't have Microsoft Word skills or whatever the case is? That is because those skills are missing from your skills section. So again, searchability, your LinkedIn headline, being able to uh, in increase your competitiveness for that competitive intelligence report for the, the open jobs is the skills section. So you can add up to 50, right? My recommendation is Add 50 if you want, if you have that many to add, but I recommend just adding the skills that are relevant and needed because when you have like this laundry list of different skills, it's difficult to get endorsements for the ones that really matter, right? So 
And that also helps too, getting your skills endorsed. So just keep that in mind. LinkedIn recommendations. At this point, we should all have at least three recommendations on our LinkedIn profiles. Yeah, I said it. Yes, yes. Three recommendations. You guys can do it. Let's make this a homework assignment, right? Let's reach out to three people that we worked on a school project with. We worked um, at a past employer with or a current employer with your boss or somebody like that. Ask for a recommendation. It really helps to show that someone values you enough to take the time out and write this recommendation and tell other people that are scoping you out about your work style, right? And the results that you can deliver. So here's a hot tip. Um, the reason why people really don't write the recommendation when you ask, maybe you've asked and got shot down and you're just like, I'm never doing this again, or maybe you haven't tried, but people don't do it because they don't really know where to start. They don't know what to write. We're all busy professionals. They're like, oh yeah, sure. I'm, I'm willing to write this recommendation, but I don't know how to, what to say, where to start or what have you. So my suggestion is to guide them, right? So specifically say, can you write a recommendation for me on the time that we worked on such and such and we delivered these results, right? So literally like tell them how you want your recommendation to be. Because for me, I don't want people in my recommendation section just saying I'm awesome and I'm friendly or whatever the case is. Because, okay, that's great, but people wanna know the results that I can deliver. So believe it or not, you can literally deliver the, these amazing results with somebody. And when you ask them to write a recommendation, they're gonna talk about how awesome you are and they're gonna forget about all that other stuff. And it's not on purpose, but you know, it's your duty to let people know what you need, okay? So maybe you can provide even a template, right? All right. This is the expanding awareness part. And let me check where I'm at as far as time because I know I can talk. Okay, all right. Expanding awareness. So this is um, executing a solid content strategy plan. Yay, can we give it up for that? Are we gonna start? All right, so executing a solid content strategy plan. This is for those people who really, really, really want to leverage LinkedIn in their favor. And when we think about a personal brand, people think about, oh, you know, monetizing or what have you. You don't always have to be trying to make money or building a business or whatever. You, it's not always about that. As we talked about earlier, your social media presence is your currency or your LinkedIn presence is your currency. But I do encourage you guys to create content on LinkedIn. Literally, there are people who have gotten jobs at amazing companies that they didn't even apply for strictly through creating content on LinkedIn because they are more visible. And again, it goes back to all those things that I described earlier. It shows initiatives, it shows that you're a self-starter, it shows your level of passion for the industry that you're in, all those different things. So um, this applies to entrepreneurs and professionals, both. So, what I suggest is these four content pillars to focus on. Number one is thought leadership. Number two is motivation and disruption. Three is inviting people in. And number four is personal branding. So thought leadership is like, if you're in marketing, if you are in sales or metaverse and all this other stuff going on, um, you can talk about that subject, right? Um, you can also provide affirmations and quotes and different things like that, if you want, if it's on brand, right? And then um, personal branding, brand stories, right? This is very key, telling your story, right? So you have to decide on the content 
that you want to share based on your goals. So for instance, if you are an entrepreneur, obviously you're gonna be doing that sales driving content, which is the thought leadership. You're also going to be inviting people into your, whatever it is you're selling, right? Um, let's say for instance, you are a professional that is looking to establish thought leadership on LinkedIn in order to attract opportunities or increase your professional currency. So you would be sharing also um, thought leadership. Like we said earlier, um, if you're in marketing, talking about that. Um, if you're a job seeker, right? If you're a job seeker, LinkedIn is a very, very supportive community. So they wanna help if you're asking for it, they want to help. So you can literally let people know what it is that you are seeking the the type of op opportunities that you're seeking what you need what maybe you need recruiters to be tagged maybe you need referrals or something like that share that with your linkedin network and i'm telling you somebody is going to support because it's just that kind of community so you could be talking about your job search wins you could be talking about your progress you could be talking about rejection in a positive light right um you could be talking about the different hurdles that you're going through as a job seeker. This all helps. This will all serve you in your job search, okay? And um, also you could be sharing stories about projects that you're working on, excited about those kind of things. So um, I say that you can start out by posting four to five times per week, but I would actually, take that back and say that three could suffice, right? Depending on your goals. So if you are looking to monetize, obviously you wanna post more, but if you are just looking for like thought leadership to establish thought leadership as a professional, then um, two to three would, would suffice, okay? Um, couple of different notes, try to post the same time so that your, um, your audience knows when to expect you put content out there the same days of the week. And um, in general, try to keep your content 90% on brand because there are um, you know, so many different things that you can do. You can share quotes and different things like that. But if you're wanting to be known as a thought leader in marketing or tech or something like that, you wanna try to keep it on brand, right? Because the goal is to not get an audience. The goal is to get the right audience. I feel like that was a, a bar right there. Okay, all right. All right, join conversations, right? So if you're not into sharing content, again, you could start out by joining different conversations and that might compel you to want to start posting on your own, okay? That has happened many times. I've seen many people that engage with me and others on LinkedIn and that motivates them to start sharing on their own, right? So by joining conversations, it will increase your visibility. So let me explain that a little bit. Engagement, right? When I say join conversations, simply that means engaging on the platform, right? So don't just have a profile, right? Make sure your profile is complete, yes. But if you're not into sharing content, at the very least, you can be active on the platform because what that will do is increase your profile visibility, right? So we talked about that search earlier. We talked about how people type in your keywords to find people like you for what you do in the search, right? So there are hundreds of pages of results that pop up, okay? And the people that are showing up on those top pages, those are the people that are more active on LinkedIn. They have more visibility on LinkedIn. And I don't know about you, but if I was a recruiter, I'm not going through 100 pages of results to find somebody, I'm just not. So um, another thing is using hashtags, right? So if you are at a point where your network is kind of small right now, you're looking to grow it with people that are relevant to what you, what you do, right? You can use hashtags to find content. You can use hashtags to find content to engage, right? So make it a plan to engage two to times 
uh, per day, two to three times per day, right? So a lot of us work remote now. Some of us still commute, take the train and whatnot. So it could even be on the commute, literally five minutes, that's all it takes. But to that point, add meaningful content, uh, comments, guys. Um, because when you're just saying like, thank you or great post, it, it kind of shows that you're just checking the box to get your engagement in for the day. Uh, try to make meaningful comments. More than three words, I would say, make it a full on sentence. Uh, you know, just try to make it appear as though you actually read what you read. Okay. All right. Network and connection building. All right. So this is the, I believe, the final phase of the framework. Okay. So set networking goals. So maybe you want job referrals. Maybe you want clients. Maybe you want to follow up on job opportunities. Maybe you want to access company decision makers. Maybe you want informational interviews. I can tell you I've had networking goals for all of this, okay? So I've needed referrals and I would literally type in my the, the, the target job title in the search and the, the company, filter it to the company. And I would reach out to people that work in that department at the company that I'm targeting and um, I would reach out to them for informational interviews, right? Of course, I'm not gonna message them, hey, let me get that referral. You know, I'm gonna try to build some kind of relationship first, but I will reach out to those individuals. I've used it to follow up on opportunities and literally this, ha this has worked. When I was job searching, I got into the habit of um, nudging a recruiter literally 24 hours after I, I would apply for a position. So I would apply for a position. I would literally search up a recruiter at the company and I would say, hey, I'm Lucretia, just letting you know that I applied for such and such role. Um, you know, these are the skills that I have to match. I would love to um, have a preliminary call. I know you may not be at the interview stage yet, but let's set up a intro call or something like that. Make it short and sweet, but I've leveraged it for that. And I've literally had several instances where somebody would be like, yes, let's talk. I've had a situation where I reached out to the wrong guy. He was like the, the head guy and he was not like in the recruiting process at all, but he literally um, had his executive assistant reach out to me and say, hey, so-and-so told me to schedule a call with you. He wants to talk to you. So they like that because recruiters, they got a lot of work to do too. They got to go through all these resumes and all this different stuff, make it easier for them. So I've used it for that. I've used it for company decision makers. I've looked for corporate contracts, speaking engagements like this. And I would find decision makers at universities, at corporations, and I would, uh, you just have to know who you're looking for. What are those job titles or keywords that can be found in their headline, which goes to the next point. What are those keywords in their headline? right? So it could be recruiter, talent acquisition, it could be CEO, whatever the case may be, right? So then um, has anybody seen the LinkedIn search or is this just like a foreign language? Raise your hand if you've seen that you're able to search on LinkedIn. Okay, so most of you guys. So literally you can't miss it. <laughs> um, it's just like a search bar and literally you'll type in keywords to find who it is that you're looking for. And you're able to use the filters too, right? So if you want to, let's say, narrow it down to a specific geographic location, right? You're looking for the Chicago recruiter. You can narrow it down to that, right? So there's just several different things that you can do with it. And then let's start connecting, start connecting, right? But we don't wanna be those people that send connection requests without a note. It's not, not cute. So um, start connecting, add a note to every request. So a couple of different notes I have here because I've seen people do this all wrong, but it's no judgment. Um, I've, I've getting, gotten uh, connection requests all the time and I see some people do it right and I see some people do it poorly. I'll still connect, but the people that do it right, 
here is what I've noticed and really have gotten my attention, right? They are genuine, right? They use my name, right? It's not a bot. So I know that they're actually looking for me, Lucretia, they're using my name. They um, make it about the other person. They don't just say, hey, you know, I want to hop on a call with you to learn more about how I can get a referral, right? Instead, it's like, hey, I wanna to talk to you about your experiences working at such and such company. I'm thinking about applying for a role there and I wanna learn more about your experience to see if this is something that I actually wanna go after and apply for, right? So make it about them, um, offer a compliment. Maybe you've seen that they've transitioned industries or something like that. And that is something that you're in the process of doing. Get creative, right? Maybe you've seen them make a jump from, uh, a jump from education to tech or something like that. And maybe you're in that same boat. Let them know that you actually read their profile. I mean, you don't have to like study it all day long, but just be genuine, right? Um, offer a compliment on something that you learned about them. Show that you've actually studied this person because I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I'm open to connect with, with everybody but we're all busy and we all got stuff to do and we can't just be jumping on the phone all the time with everybody. And the people that kind of approach me and they're like, hey, and it's all about them um, or it's very like vague, right? And they're asking to connect, but I'm not sure what they want to connect about. Then depending on where I'm at, I may not be open to connecting at that time, you know, depending on what I have in my plate. Um, be quick and to the point, don't send a whole dissertation that nobody's gonna read. It's okay, you don't, you don't have to do that. And say what you want, right? Say what you want. Of course, do all these other things, make it about them, be genuine, use their name, et cetera, et cetera. But also say what you want. This is not about manipulation. It's not about like, you know, acting as though you don't want anything, but you really want something. Like, just come out with it. It's okay. And that's it. That's it. Did I go over time? I talk a lot. I know I did. Okay. All right. So I would like to take questions at this time. Any questions that you have? Yes, ma'am. So, oh. Yeah, I I personally love it. I think it is normalizing people taking career breaks and not judging people based on having a gap in their career and stuff like that. I mean, come on now. We Life isn't meant to be working 40 years straight without any type of break. It's okay, right? So I love that they're doing that personally. I would suggest to, you know, provide a little detail about what you're doing on your break. It doesn't have to be that deep. I mean, you don't have to make up stuff and act like you're being this good Samaritan if you're just chilling. I mean, if you're volunteering, then yeah, you can put that. But if you're taking um, a career break, you know, just to uh, maybe for mental health or maybe to, you know, travel or something like that, you can, you can say that because I'm all, I'm all for um, attracting the right people. So if you're going to judge me because I'm taking a career break for my mental health and you don't want to hire me for that, then that's good for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so 
I might be the wrong person to ask that. I might be biased because I don't know if you've seen my LinkedIn profile picture, but I get hate mail every single day because I'm wearing a suit, but I'm also wearing a corset under it. And some people are like, oh, that's not professional for LinkedIn. It's too revealing or whatever the case is. But I'm going to be me at the end of the day. I like to be a little stylish if, you know, in my way. And that's my way of being myself. And so I get a lot of hate mail from that, you know, um, because of what I'm wearing. And I'm also wearing braids in my profile picture too. And so I'm just all, all about showing up as yourself because it's really hard to pretend and fake it. It's hard to keep up with that. I don't want to start something that I can't finish. I don't want you to hire me and get into this organization. And then I show up with, you know, uh, whatever my hair is. And I had it in a different way during the interview process. I don't know. Take it how you want it. But I'm all about being yourself because I don't have time to keep up with, with something. And it's all about attracting the right people, right? Yes. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. The way I see it is and I'm going to do my best to answer this cuz it could get a little complicated, but what I will say is that you want to keep it relevant. Right. And so let's say, for instance, I worked as a cashier for three months to, for some extra cash or something like that while I was working in corporate or whatever the case is. I don't have to tell everybody my business about being a cashier or whatever the case is. Like, not, of course, nothing's wrong with it. It's great, but I don't have to do that. OK, um, because it's not relevant to my goals. They don't they don't really care about that. So I would say to try to keep it relevant, but at the same token, if it's going to create a huge career gap, then you probably do want to add in those different experiences. Um, and now as far as the experience section is concerned, the content, you can copy paste from your resume. That part, I was just saying mostly the, um, the summary, the LinkedIn summary, the about section, you don't wanna copy paste that because I don't wanna land in, on my own profile, Lucretia Davis is such and such, and she hailed from the city of Chicago. I don't, I don't want to hear all that. You know, I want to, I want to keep reading it. I want people to keep reading your stuff. Um, but for the experience section, maybe you could just bullet the accomplishments, the the quantifiable stuff. You don't have to put in all the the details if you don't want. But um, just try to keep it relevant. And if um, um, if it's going to create a career gap, just be mindful that you probably will have to add some of that stuff in. Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> So were you off for 10 years? Uh, no, I've been working this whole time. I just stopped updating it. Oh, okay. I mean, you can completely, you can completely overhaul the brand if you want and make it, it, it you have to think about the goal that you want. Like when you, when people visit your profile, what do you want them to know you for? What is it, the, the type of people that you're wanting to attract? Um, how can you get that buy-in, right? So you always want to consider the goal. I mean, last year I could have aspired to be a social media manager and my brand could have been all of, about that. If this year I want to go into tech, right? I can completely revamp that brand. The thing is the headline and the about section, it's your world. 
you can get creative. You can tailor it to what you want to do. It gets a little tricky with the experience section because your experience is your experience. But if you're transitioning into something else, you can make that summary and, and headline your own and, and make it relevant to what you do. So always consider the goal first and then write. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? Questions, comments? All right, do we all love LinkedIn now? <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Lucretia, for this wonderful presentation. No problem. Um, and to our made, excuse me, our amazing. Thank you, Lucretia, for your. Thank you, Lucretia, for your amazing <laughs> presentation. Thank you three times. Um, and to our amazing audience here and at home, uh, I'm so impressed with the breadth of knowledge you shared with us today about leveraging LinkedIn for our professional and personal success. I will share that somewhere on this Android, or I have Android, but you can get your, <clears throat> yeah, well, I know we're in two different camps here, um, but somewhere on my Android, there's a way for you to pull up your QR code for your LinkedIn profile, and you can take a picture of it like you do at a menu at a restaurant, and that's how you can um, add, you know, six, 50, 40, 60 people here today to your connection as you're building your, your correct audience. Um, these, yes. these, these are good people I would suggest you add. Um, so thank you so much for this and all, everything you shared today. <laughs> and don't forget to connect with Lucretia if she'll have you yeah, <laughs> on her LinkedIn. And do check out her website. It is full of great things. Um, I know there's uh, several work workbooks on her um, page. Yes. Um, so check those out. And I think some of them are even um, free. I'm Absolutely. pretty sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, if any of you guys are, whether you're a job seeker or whether you're building a brand, reach out to me. And I have a lot of stuff, that valuable stuff right? Not just junk, but I yeah. have a lot of valuable stuff that I can share with you guys. So like from interviewing to I'm telling you, this is my <laughs> first time using one of these, um, from interviewing tips, um, resume templates, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so feel free to reach out. Yes. And I also do a plug for a few, a few, uh, an, an additional, <laughs> It's thanks for being here, everybody. <laughs> no, um, I also do, we'll do an additional plug um, for our Office of Career Services, who's here today, if you wanna raise your hands. Um, as a student and alumni, you uh, have access to our services and re resources and benefits, including resume building, mock interviewing. I mean, we do LinkedIn workshops, et cetera. So as an alum, that's a benefit for you to have, uh, to utilize. So thank you for that. Um, and I'm also going to plug before I say thank you, my final thank you. Please do, um, in terms of career building, please chat with uh, Hilton and Presbyterian Homes and just chat about what opportunities they have at their companies. And, um, you know, aside from, you know, does, does, for Hilton, you know, you don't have to be a hotelier, hotelier to like work for, is that a word? Is it a word? I think you just made it up, but I like it's it. It's a word. Okay. Hotel. <laughs> Hotel air. Hotel, Hotel air. Okay. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been long, a long day already. But um, no, you know, there's opportunities in marketing management, et cetera, like recruiting, sales, you know, all these things with these companies. So thank you so much. And again, round of applause to you, Lucretia. Thank you for being here. Thank you.